Welcome to FUVI's Solid Courses Demos. Hot AI 15-minute lecture based on Stanford CS229. Machine Learning, Lecture 3. Probabilistic Modeling and Logistic Regression, taught by Professor Andrew Eng. The voice is AI dubbed from Professor Eng's original lecture. Welcome to Lecture 3, Probabilistic Modeling and Logistic Regression. By the end of this 15-minute lecture, you'll have a solid grasp of two key concepts. First, probabilistic modeling, the mathematical framework that expresses learning models in probabilistic form. Second, logistic regression, a classification model derived from that probabilistic form. Now, let's explore what probabilistic modeling means and how it works, starting with a quick review of linear regression. In Lecture 2, to predict house prices, we looked at each example in the dataset and learned the relationship between the output Y, the price, and the features X, the size. We then fit a straight line H of X to this data, written as H of X equals theta 0 plus theta 1 X. If we have multiple features, we add X1, X2, and so on, up to Xn, like this. The summation form looks like this, and in vector form we write it as h of x equals theta transpose x, and this is the form we'll use throughout this lecture. Let's look at this house. This is the predicted price, theta x, and this is the actual price, y. The difference between them, denoted by epsilon, is called the error. So we can express the actual price as the predicted price plus the error, y equals theta x plus epsilon. By assuming that epsilon is independently and identically distributed, IID, our model now accounts for unmodeled effects or random noise. This gives us what we call probabilistic modeling. Let's dive deeper into it next. In this model, we assume that the unmodeled effects, or random noise, follow a normal or Gaussian distribution. Each epsilon i is distributed according to a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a variance of sigma squared. The variance, sigma squared, is defined as the average of all the squared errors. The normal distribution is defined by this exponential formula. It appears as a smooth, bell-shaped curve like this. In standard notation, we write p of yi, given xi, semicolon, theta. This represents the probability of yi given xi, parameterized by theta. And its formula, in terms of xi, yi, and theta, is shown here. Here is the corresponding random variable form. This is its bell-shaped curve. Notice that the mean is now theta transpose xi. Now, let's look at this formula. We call this term the probability of the data under our model. Another name is the likelihood, which we'll explore in more detail next. Now, let's express their relationship here. We place an arrow over y to indicate that it represents the probability of the entire data set, all y1 through yn. Based on our IID assumption, the errors are independently and identically distributed. So, the probability of the data is the product of the probabilities of all examples, from i equals 1 to m. So, the likelihood is now a product with m factors, and each factor is an exponential term. To simplify, we work with the log of the likelihood instead of the likelihood itself. Here, we introduce a new term lowercase l of theta, called the log likelihood, equals the log of the likelihood. It is equal to the log of this product, and then it is equal to the sum of these two logs. The first term is a constant, so it's equal to m times that constant. The second term is the log of an exponential, which simplifies to the sum of the exponents. So now the log likelihood is equal to this expression. So now, one of the most well-tested methods in statistics for estimating parameters is to use maximum likelihood estimation, or MLE, which means you choose theta to maximize the likelihood, or in other words, choose the value of theta that maximizes the probability of the data. Because the likelihood and the log likelihood are monotonic, we can maximize the log likelihood instead of the likelihood itself. Now let's look at this result of the log likelihood. The first term is a constant, so it doesn't affect the optimization. Therefore, maximizing the log likelihood is equivalent to maximizing the second term, or minimizing this term instead. And as you know, this is exactly the cost function j of theta. So this little proof shows that minimizing the least squares error is the same as maximizing the likelihood, under the assumptions that the errors are Gaussian 
and IID. But why did we do this? The purpose is to take into account the probability of the data in our model so that we can extend this framework to handle nonlinear data, as you'll see next. So, what is the framework? First, we modeled the problem through a set of probabilistic assumptions. Second, we formulated assumptions about the data, P of Y given X, which we called the likelihood. Third, we maximized that likelihood. Now let's take this same framework and apply it to a binary classification problem, which leads to a learning model called logistic regression. Remember in lecture two, given the size linear regression predicts the price of a house, it works well because size and price have a linear relationship. Now, given the price, logistic regression predicts the probability that the house will be sold in under 90 days. Let's look at this data set. Assume all houses are in the same size range. The first column shows the house prices. The second column shows the output. Let Y represent the sale classification. If Y equals 1, the house was sold in over 90 days. If Y equals 0, the house was sold in under 90 days. And here is the diagram. Prices is on the X axis and sale classification is on the Y axis. Theoretically, you could use linear regression to define a straight line as a hypothesis, like this one. Then, you determine the midpoint here. All houses with prices to the left of this point would have a higher probability of being sold in under 90 days, and all houses to the right would be more likely to be sold in over 90 days. It seems like a reasonable hypothesis at first. However, if there's an example far away on the right, like this one, the line becomes less steep, like this one, and the midpoint shifts to the right here. As a result, almost all houses fall to the left of the new midpoint, including those that were actually sold in over 90 days. Obviously, this new line no longer correctly classifies houses that were sold in under 90 days. So, the straight line doesn't work. We need to transform that straight line into a curved shape, one that lies between 0 and 1, asymptotes to 0 on the left, asymptotes to 1 on the right, and equals 0.5 at the mean. So, given the straight line z equals theta transpose x, we now need to define a function, g of z, that transforms this straight line into a curved shape. And this function is exactly what we're looking for. g of z equals 1 over 1 plus e to the power of negative z. It's called the sigmoid function, or logistic function. If we replace z with theta transpose x, the logistic function becomes this, h of x equals 1 over 1 plus e to the power of negative theta transpose x. Now, let's return to our framework and start with step 1, probabilistic modeling, to express this logistic model in probabilistic form. As previously defined, the probabilistic form is written as p of y given x semicolon theta. Now, applying it in the case where y equals 1, we have this first equation. If y equals 0, we have this second equation, and this equation unifies both of the above. You can easily check this. If y equals 1, the second term becomes 1, and the first term becomes h of x. This matches the first equation. If y equals 0, the first term becomes 1, and the second term becomes 1 minus h of x. This matches the second equation. Now, let's move on to step 2 of our framework. Define the likelihood of theta. As previously defined, the likelihood of theta is the probability of the data. It equals the product of the probabilities of all examples from i equals 1 to m. Then, by substituting the equation we found above, we get the formula to calculate the likelihood. Now, let's move on to step 3 of our framework. Maximize the likelihood of theta. As defined earlier, we'll maximize the log likelihood instead of the likelihood itself, meaning we maximize the log of this product. Because the log of a product is equal to the sum of the logs, we can now maximize this sum instead. Let's start by working with just one training example, x and y, and take derivatives to derive the stochastic gradient ascent rule. The derivative of the log likelihood equals this. Now, Expanding the derivative at the end of this expression and then simplifying the result becomes y minus h of theta x multiplied by xj, and this gives us the update rule. Theta j equals theta j plus learning rate alpha times the derivative we've just found. So what do we have here? This update rule looks the same as the one we found for linear regression. However, they're actually different. The difference lies in this hypothesis. This is the linear learning model, and this is the logistic learning model. 
But why do two rather different algorithms have the same update rule? Is this just a coincidence, or is there a deeper reason behind it? We'll answer that question in Lecture 4, Generalized Linear Models. For now, Lecture 3 ends here. Thank you for watching. <laughs>